Okay, now for question number eight from October 2018, Mechanics 1, um, international A-level paper, the last question on this paper here. Uh, we have a rough plane inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal, particle P of mass 0 0.5 kilograms. Let's just start putting these forces in here. So you have particle P of mass 0 0.5 kilograms, so its weight will be 0 0.5 G newtons going down there is held at rest on the plane by a horizontal force of magnitude 5 newtons now i personally don't like when the forces are drawn like this i like to make my life a bit easier and just draw them on this side instead there's absolutely nothing wrong with drawing on this side it's exactly the same thing but what i'm going to do is i'm going to just save confusion i'm going to just erase it from the other side there's absolutely no problem if you do this. Um, although you're not allowed to use white out, but if you just do a little diagram, um, redrawing the forces, it's fine for you to redraw the forces without this force on that side. It just makes it a lot easier for me when I'm resolving forces and stuff. I prefer to just do it in this way. That's all. Okay, so the five newtons I've just drawn on this side instead of that side. Okay, um, so basically this angle here is 30 because they're corresponding. So it's a lot easier to see the angles and how to resolve the forces and everything else. Okay, the force acts in a vertical plane containing a line of greater slope of the inclined plane. The particle is on the point of moving up the plane. So if it's on the point of moving up the plane, that means friction is acting down the plane. So you've got friction and because it's on the point of moving, it's reached its maximum value. Okay, if you were to increase that force even a slight bit more it will start moving up the plane so it's reached its limiting value which is f max and we know that the f, f max is equal to mu times r okay so um it says the particle is on the point of moving up the plane um find the magnitude of the normal reaction of the plane on p okay so now we've got to find the reaction force of course there is a reaction force acting which is perpendicular to the point of contact Okay, which is going to be perpendicular to the plane. So what we need to do is resolve the forces or these weights perpendicular to the plane and parallel to the plane. So these dotted lines are the resolved parts of the weight. So this is this angle is 30 degrees. Okay, so we have 0 0.5 G times. Now here we have to move into the angle, so it's going to be cosine 30. G, sorry, cosine 30. And here we'll have 0 0.5 g times sine of 30. And also we've got the force P, which has a component which is par parallel and perpendicular to the plane as well. So you can see that this is where you have to uh, resolve the force going into the angle. So that's going to be 5 times um, going into the angle, cosine 30. And this will be 5 times sine 30. Okay, so part A says find the magnitude of the reaction or the normal reaction at P, which is RR. So let's resolve the forces that are acting perpendicular to the plane. So you have R is equal to, because it's in equilibrium, R is equal to, and you've got 0 0.5 G cosine 30 times G times cosine of 30. And you've also got the the component of this P acting into or down um, perpendicular to the plane, which is 5 sine 30. And that will give you what R is. Simple as that. So once you've done these, written, drawn these forces in, you've done most of the work. It's just a simple case now of just dealing with these. Okay, so now let's put these values in. You've got 0 0.5 times 9.8 times cosine 30 make sure I'm in degree mode I am okay so that's um, plus 5 sine 30 which is going to be 2.5 because um, sine 30 is a half so that gives us this value which I'll just I'll write as 6.7435 three five newtons which you can round either to two sf because we use g so you can write you can write the answer 6.7 newtons or up to three sf 
6.74 newtons. Both of those are acceptable answers. You can write any one of those two answers. Okay, you could have left it in terms of G if you wanted to. Um, we could have written the answer in its exact form like this, but that would be a bit unnecessary. Okay, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to store this under A in case I need it. That way I've got it, the exact value stored. It will keep accuracy in my other parts of the question. So that's part A done. Now we can do part B. Let's just move this stuff up here so we can get more space in case we need it. This is a five mark question. Find the coefficient of friction between P and the plane. Now the coefficient of friction, okay, is equal to F max over R. The coefficient of friction is equal to F max divided by R. Now we know what R is already. We've got to find what F max is. So now let's resolve the forces parallel to the plane. So you see that most of the marks in these questions are just got by resolving the forces perpendicular and parallel to the plane. Now this is statics. This is not moving. It's on the point of moving, right? So it's in equilibrium. So the total, the 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 um, you know the resultant forces are zero. So I can say here that five cosine thirty is equal to um, plus 5 cosine 30, sorry, is equal to 0 0.5 g sine 30 plus the friction m, okay? Uh, sorry, the f max, sorry. Okay, um, so you've got 5 cosine 30. That's acting up. And what's acting down is equal to, like, what's acting down because it's in equilibrium, is equal to 0 0.5 g sine 30. 0 0.5 g sine 30. Okay, plus the the maximum friction, which is Fm. I put F max. Okay, those are the only forces acting in the the plane parallel to the plane. So you got this acting upwards, this, which is the component of P of this this five newton force acting up there, and you've got the friction, and you've got the component of the weight acting down the plane. Okay, so now if I rearrange this, I can find what F is. I know that F max is going to be 5 cosine 30, which is 5 times root 3 over 2, minus, and this is going to be um, 0 0.5 g times a half, so it's 0 0.25 g, sine 30 is a half. So that's going to give me my value of f max. Okay, so you're going to have, um, I'll just put it in, in this form. 5 cosine 30, put it over here. So you've got 5 cosine 30, that's already saved. So 5 cosine 30 minus 0 0.5 times 9.8 times sine 30. Okay. Um, hold on. Yeah, that gives us that value, which is basically 1.8801 okay um, let's just make sure we did that right 5 cosine 30 minus 0 0.5 times 9.8 times sine 30 yeah okay so let's store that as B okay so we want to find the coefficient of friction. So the coefficient of friction mu is equal to, we know, as you said, as we said, F max is equal to mu r. So mu is equal to F max over r. So it's 1.8801 divided by our value for r, which was 6.7435. I'm going to use the exact values from the calculator. So it's going to be um, my last value divided by the first value. Oops. My last value. Anyway, I'll just. I'm going to recall the second value and divide it by the first value. Okay. So you get 0 0.2788. 0 0.2788. So you can say that mu is equal to 0 0.28, or if you want, you can say 0 0.279. Both of those will be acceptable as we've used G in our calculations. And that's part B done. That's A and B now done. And part C, 
The force of magnitude 5 newtons is now removed and P accelerates from rest down the plane. Find the speed of P after it has traveled 3 meters down the plane. Okay, so now this force has been removed. So all you've got now is basically uh, the following situation. You've got the... It's the same plane, but that force is removed. So this is P. You've got its weight, which was 0 0.5 G. Okay, so its weight is 0 0.5 G. Okay, you've got the reaction force, which is going to be different now because that P has been removed. So we have to recalculate the reaction force. Um, 0 0.5 G, yeah, okay, and that's 30 degrees, just to make sure. Okay, so the angle here is 30 degrees. So everything is the same except P is removed now. Okay, so now what we've got to do is we've got to resolve the forces um, perpendicular and parallel to the plane. So this is 0 0.5 G times cosine 30. Okay, and this is 0 0.5 G times sine of 30. So we've got to find the speed of P. So we've got to find the acceleration of first. Okay, so we've got to find the acceleration. It's going to accelerate in this direction. Okay, so what we can say is um, F equals MA again. I'm going to take down the plane as positive as it's moving down the plane. So we can say that 0 0.5 G sine 30 is equal to MA. So the mass is 0 0.5 and A is what we have to find. So basically what's going to happen is, this cancels with this, so you'll say A is equal to G sine 30. Okay, which is going to be 9.8 times a half, which is 4.9 meters per second squared. So it's accelerating at 4.9 meters per second squared down the plane. Okay, so now we can use R. What did I forget? This is a lesson to you all. What did I forget? Mm -hmm. I forgot that it was a rough plane. And there's going to be friction acting up the plane now. Okay, don't make that mistake. Maybe I made that mistake just to see who is awake out of you guys. And you're saying, no, sir, you got it wrong. Yeah, no, no. There's also the friction. And that friction now has changed. It's different. Because now the reaction force is different. Because there's no force pushing down. All right, that, the other, that force here had a component down, so R will be different. In this case now, if we resolve perpendicular to the plane, we can say R is equal to 0 0.5 G times cosine 30. So that means R is equal to a half times 9.8 times root 3 over 2. Okay, let's just give it a value. So we have r is equal to 0 0.5 times 9.8 times cosine 30 which gives you 49 root 3 over 20 49 root 3 over 20 which is the same as just writing 4.243 4.243 and I will save this exact value under A I don't need the, what we had from the last page now, so I'll store it under A. Okay, so that's R. So now we can find out what F max is. F max is mu R. Now the coefficient of friction uh, we found. See, I should have kept the last answer, shouldn't I? The coefficient of friction is 0 0.2788. I'll use it as this value. 0 0.2788. So 0 0.2788 times our R value, which is um, 49 root 3 over 20. So we found we can find what F max is. Okay, so we have this multiplied by 0 0.2788. Okay, that gives us 1, 1.1830. So I'll save that as, as, as B. Okay, 1.18309. So 1.18309, okay? So now, 
that's F max. So now we can resolve the forces um, in this direction, and the forces in this direction are 0 0.5 G times sine 30, and what's opposing this is f uh, F max, which is 1.18309, and that's equal to MA, which is 0 0.5, times a. Now we can work out what a is. Now we can work out what a is. Okay, so we got this. So we have 0 0.5 g sine 30 minus this answer. 0 0.5 times 9.8 times sine of 30 minus the last answer okay and then divided by 0 0.5 okay so a is equal to 2.5538 so a is equal to 2.5538 is that the question asking us to find a no okay so that's the acceleration we need that to find our answer so i'm going to i'm going to save that store that as Let's do it as C in case I need the other things. All right, so now we want to find how far the speed of P after it has traveled three meters down the plane. So now we've got a constant acceleration of 2.5538 going down the plane. So let's use SUVAT. We want to know how, um, we want to find its speed, its final speed um, after it's traveled three meters. The initial speed is zero when it started moving. V is what we have to find. And the acceleration is 2.5538. Okay, and this is meters per second squared. So we can use V equals U plus AT. Okay, now U is zero, so we just got A times T. Ah, V equals U plus, we don't have T. We can't use V equals U, U plus AT, we need S here. So let's see, we can, say, we can use um, V squared equals U squared plus 2AS, sorry. Okay, V squared equals u squared plus 2as. So v squared is equal to u squared which is 0 plus 2 times 2.5538 times 3 meters. Okay, so v squared is equal to, we have this answer times 2 and times 3 equals 15.202 and so V is equal to the square root of that. So you take this answer and you find it's the square root of the answer equals 3.8990. 3.899 meters per second, which you should round to either 2SF, in which case it will be 3.9 meters per second, or 3SF, in which case it will be 3.90, that 3, 3SF meters per second. Whichever way you want to, you can do either of these ways because we've used G in our calculation again. Okay, so th that's the answer for the speed of P as it's traveled three meters down the plane. And there's the end of that question.